Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I am your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will so I can continue to bring you that gospel of Gamecocks every single day day every single day y'all and and uh maybe twice a day maybe three times a day i'm not quite sure so much going on in women's basketball right now so much going on the season just ended but it's like it's like season ended we got a championship you know three time three time three time national champion South Carolina Gamecock women's basketball program and if you are new to Captain Will you're not rocking with the best you're rocking with the best and since you're rocking with the best come rock with your man Captain Will, parade was Sunday. Yesterday, parade was turned up all over the state house, all over Columbia. Billboards everywhere. Girls taking over the city, took over the city. Girls took over South Carolina. But we're going to revisit a little bit about uh, a future Gamecock. We got to talk about a future Gamecock who's going to be showing up this summer. And her name is Joyce Edwards. Joyce Edwards, according to ESPN, the number three ranked recruit in the 2024 recruiting class. Anybody with a set of eyes knows that she's special. I'm not sure who watched Team USA take on the world. Nike Summit came on Saturday night. And Joyce Edwards put on display like, uh, uh, like, um, Joyce Edwards is a star, y'all. Joyce Edwards is a star. She's going to be a star for the South Carolina women's basketball program. I don't even know how to uh know how to put it in words. I don't know how to 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 uh uh put an exclamation mark on the uh uh ability of one Joyce Edwards from Camden High School, six foot three. The girl is special. She's special, and even. Even this Team USA team that that didn't have Sarah Strong, she's out with injury. Didn't have Jelani Cambridge, out with injury. Our own Maddie McDaniel wasn't on the uh wasn't wasn't listed to play as well because she's out with injury. Joyce Edwards let the world know that she is her. Joyce Edwards is special. Special individual, and we have a special talent coming to South Carolina. And I read the social media stuff in the game. I read all that stuff, like like uh, like of uh, the first quarter. I uh, see some people. Oh, why is Joyce ranked so high? She shouldn't be ranked number three in the country. Oh, oh damn! I think they, I think they out, uh, they outdid themselves. Joyce shouldn't be there where she is. Well, that second half, when when we were down about fourteen points. 14 points to Team World, which is straight up sensational. You talking about Kate Koval. You talking about uh, Fournier. You talking about so many different great players on that Team World uh, that's going to Silas Swartz that will be will be watching during the next four years at Michigan, at, at, at Southern Cal, at Notre Dame. So many different players. Joyce Edwards came out in the second half like, I am her. I am her. This is me. I am the best player on the court. And brought those uh, Team USA ladies back. Down 14 points. Joyce finished with 25 points. Four, five steals. Few assists. What, nine rebounds? I'm not sure. She put in work. The versatility of this young lady and then you 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 you're talking about a, a a situation. You're talking about a person. You're talking about a player. Where Don Staley, where Don Staley has another tool she can work with. I'm like, what? This girl right here. First off, she don't get tired. Let's 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 begin there with this. She don't get tired. She is a relentless, relentless offensive rebounder. What? She's a great passer. She can handle the ball. She crossed up somebody. She can play defense. And oh my God, it's all, oh, Joyce can't shoot. Uh, Joyce can't shoot. She can't do this. Well, she had a mid-range jumper. I saw that. But what she was, was dominant. Dominant in the post. 
post moves on top of post moves, defense on top. Oh, oh, oh. you saw that steal? You saw that steal when she was at a perimeter on a point guard and got the steal. Wow. Wow. Joyce Edwards joining this team in the summer after being uh, so highly recruited, after being in, 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 been playing. Yo, she's playing soccer right now. Who does that? She's playing soccer right now. That's why she don't get tired. She's so fast. She's so agile. We have a really good player in Joyce Edwards. And we're going to have him for four years. Four years. Joyce Edwards will be donning the, the garden in black. I don't know what I don't know what Don has in store with Joyce this upcoming season, but I tell you this, she got to get minutes. She got to get minutes. I've been talking about Joyce since I started this show. I've been talking about Joyce and how good she is since I started this show. It's only been a year. It's only been a year. Joyce Edwards is going to straight up dominate the SEC. Not saying it's going to happen this season. Not saying it's going to happen this uh, next season. It could. But I tell you this right here. When, when Joyce Edwards graduate from the University of South Carolina, she will definitely leave a mark on the SEC. She will definitely leave a mark on women's college basketball as a whole. It, it, she, she, I mean, I mean, as I'm watching that game, because it's more than a um, it's more than a scrimmage. Very intense. Good basketball. Too many turnovers, but it's be expected, right? But it's different than like the McDonald's All American game where she was co MVP. It's different than seeing um, you no know, exposure camps and and things of that nature. You talking about Team USA playing some of the best ladies in the world? This was a plethora of future WNBA talent. So amazing, unbelievable to see. Our girls, and, and, and you know, I have to, I have to uh, critique the uh, the uh, commentators. I have to critique the commentators. I have to. I, it wouldn't be me if I don't. Started off great, uh, you know, good energy and, and, and knowledgeable, and then started talking about Sarah and started talking about Jelani. It's like those two aren't playing in the game. So I'm, I'm watching. I'm so in between Jelani, in between Sarah, is somebody named Manny McDaniel. We didn't even mention the whole 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 show, whole game. Never mentioned uh, Manny McDaniel in the center of both of those two players who was ranked 13th in the country, who's a number two ranked point guard, who's also going to South Carolina. So many different storylines they could have went with because they talked about multiple players as Southern Cal and Notre Dame and Duke and all this. But sitting in the middle of those two young ladies is one Manny McDaniel. So I just I guess I assume she just in a sweatsuit and, and not one of the, the 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 players who's gonna uh who's one of the best players in the country. No mention, but it's cool. It's cool. Sometimes you gotta do more research. I got it. I got it. But as I'm watching a game, I just started to envision some some situations where you know you got Joyce and you got uh uh Ashton Watkins on the court at the same time. Two all state. Volleyball players, two ultra athletic players, two players who, because Joyce, that's a thing. Joyce or Watkins can, can guard the five, the four, and the three. Joyce was guarding um, Kate Koval. Kate Koval, top seven, top six player in the country, six foot five, six foot five. Played at that Long Island Lutheran school. They had three McDonald's All-American players on that team. K. Koval, Sala Swords. Um, the young lady it escapes me because she's going to Yukon, a shooter. All of those young ladies played on the same uh 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 high school team. Now, this team USA squad didn't have as much size as the world squad. Robertson was their biggest player, six foot four. OK, and Robertson is going to uh, Duke. She's going to Duke University. So Joyce was 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 banging with um, K. Koval a good portion of the, of the game. Six foot five against six foot three. Joyce didn't back down. She did not. She got her 
Kate Koval got some. But the athleticism of a Joyce Edwards going uh, 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 against uh, a player, the capability of Kate Koval, who we will see at Notre Dame. We'll see them sometime next season, not next season, the following season. We're going to see those matchups. But I was just so, because I was watching more defense. I'm watching her positions. I'm watching her getting those steals. I'm watching her intensity. I'm watching her jump on the, the floor. I was watching what we are going to love in the, the upcoming 2024-2025 season. That's what I love. So I'm thinking about Ashley Watkins. I'm thinking about Joyce Edwards. I'm thinking about a player like Tessa Johnson. Bumping the ground and going, doing those things on the court, laying out for each other. I'm thinking about those things. You're going to get a player in Joyce Edwards who can guard. Let's just say that right there. She can guard. She can guard. She's going to get on the floor because she can guard. She's going to also get a player who can, who's smart, who is so intense, but her face doesn't change. It stays the same way. Facial expression doesn't change. You know what goes in her mind. She probably already thinking about the second, the third, and the next order effect. Because she's a doggone genius. The girl got over 5.0 GPA. Time I go to law school. She's a genius. She's exceptional. Player. Oh, we have a good one. We have a good one at the University of South Carolina, y'all. This girl is going to, I mean, I mean come on. Let's just say this right here. Can you look how those is gone? She's going to be drafted tonight. Probably number two, number three, number four ranked uh, fourth pick in this uh, WNBA draft. So special, so great. And she, but she's leaving 25, roughly about 26 minutes to play. Somebody got you know, 26 minutes to play. Somebody got to get it. You got Joyce. You got a Dale Tack. You got Sonia Fagan. Somebody got to get that burn. Okay. I don't know what's going to go down this summer, but. A portion of those 26 minutes is going to Joyce Edwards. It's going to happen. It has to happen. Will she play as much as a Malaysia Full Wiley played this past season? Will she play as much as the Tessa Johnson played this past season? I mean, my Malaysia Full Wiley averaged about 18, 19 minutes. Tessa Johnson, as the season went on, she averaged more minutes and more minutes and more minutes. You talking about uh, Tessa finished up with about 17 minutes per basketball game after not getting a lot of burn early in the season. She just got get, got better, better, and better. Now, Joyce Edwards playing both sides of the court. She getting about 16, 17, 18 minutes of basketball. She getting some burn at the three and the four position. And if they want to go small, they can do that too. She getting run. She getting run. You, SEC, y'all better watch out. Y'all better watch out for this one. And... and SEC, national, uh, nationally rated, rated teams, all those different things. The transfer reporter going bananas. Mm -mm. Nah, we don't need nobody. Nope. Nope, we don't need nobody from the transfer portal. And you got teams like, uh, what's the team? Kentucky. Kentucky trying to stack a little bit, you know, coming here and there. Ohio State doing their thing. Just saw AJ Petty just committed. Dope. That's good. That's good. You got all these different, you know, maybe they're going to try to uh, move uh, uh, move from individually centric teams to, you know, well-rounded quality depth teams. That looks like the mode Ohio State is going. That looks like, you know, Southern Cal, I hope we play Southern Cal this season. I hope we do. Because they got some talented freshmen. Kennedy Smith is, is, is amazing. I'll talk about her in another video. I really wanted Kennedy Smith to come to South Carolina, but she is a really good basketball player. She's going to make Southern Cal very, very happy. That Those are the facts. And Kennedy Smith and Juju Watkins together, and they had their little rivalry, you know, uh, uh, during the high school and everything. But they got five top 100 uh, players coming in from this recruiting class three of which are in the top 40. So they got some players coming in. So it won't, won't just be the Juju Watkins show. And I love me some, you know, watching the game, some um, Jordan Lee. Jordan Lee is nice going to Texas. I really wanted her too. 
I wanted her, but she decided to stay home and, and play with Texas. But she's nice. And uh, Michaela Blakes. And and then, you know, I already talked about Kate Koval. Fournier, who going to Duke? Y'all keep an eye on that girl right there. That girl, she was six foot two, dunking easily with two hands. Outstanding player. But there was nobody, nobody on that court better than Joyce Edwards. Nobody on that court. Was better than that girl. She was killing it. She was killing it. I mean, I'm just just overjoyed at the potential of a player like Joyce Edwards have. Oh my lord. Mm. Let's go through some of these uh, comments. Got some good comments, especially on an afternoon like this right here. Darren Garcia turned up. You already know. Uh, sneak ahead. She sure is. Put her put her team on the back. She did. She put her team in the back and came out so aggressive that second, that third quarter. Like, I'm doing this right here. I'm doing this. And she proved, and she did the thing, man. She she brought the team back. They started putting that trap on them, and uh, the world had no, they had no answer for that. But when you have athletic players who can, can move and smart basketball players, it's really nothing you can do. It's really nothing you can do. Christopher Jones, what's up, Cap? She showed why she's the best at the Nike game Saturday. Yes. She did. And whoever, whoever, whoever fixed their face and doubted Joyce Edwards, don't, 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 don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that. Because you don't become a great player by just one game or just two games. You become a great player over the course of time. Okay? Joyce Edwards has been her. For quite some time in high school basketball. This time last, or during the summer, she was balling with Chloe Kitts. Team USA. You just don't make a Team USA team just because of some cool highlights. You don't do that. You don't do that. She's going to be so great for the Gamecocks. It's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Antonio, she brought him back, Cap. You got that right. You got that right, brother. Kendall L. Joyce will get time at a three this season. They will work on her shooting and defense during the summer. Yeah, she's going to get some burn. And great comment, Kendall L. She's going to get some burn in a three position. And you have a player with the capability, the defensive length of a Joyce Edwards guarding at the three position? Bruh, that is, uh, oh, I can't wait. Because you have a, if there's a scenario, there's a scenario where you got Joyce, um, Ashlyn Watkins, Joyce at the three, Ashlyn Watkins at the four, and a healthy Adele Tack at the five to go along with a Raven Johnson at the one, and then at the two, you know, have a Malaysia full Wiley. That deep, first off, that defense is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Good luck on scoring on that. Good luck. And, and, and you can even say, you could even have a situation you uh, with Watkins at the five. You can have Chloe at the four, Joyce at the three. I mean, it's just so many different scenarios you can go to. So many, so many lineups that that um, this Carolina team can do. The best in the world, three time, three time, three time national champions, ladies and gentlemen, just got better. Got better. These are the reasons why I was saying earlier this year that the Gamecocks of 2024 through 2025 is going to be better than this current squad that just won the national championship, just went 38 and 0 and just put the world on notice. We've won two out of the last three championships. Two out of the last three. Next year's squad with the addition of Joyce Edwards, Adele Tack, and Maddie McDaniel, is going to be unbelievable. And I hate that some fans, and make sure you Google or YouTube Maddie McDaniel because she's been hurt a good portion of this 2024 calendar year. But I'm letting you know, I'm letting you know right now, Maddie McDaniel is the truth. And we have a straight up baller arriving this summer. With her. Baller. How many minutes is she going to get? I don't know. Because we have a lot of guards. A lot of guards. But 2025, 
2026, next season after next, next season, yeah, next season after next, when there's a potential that uh, uh, or Powell be gone, for sure. Bria be gone, for sure. There are minutes to be had. Raven, this is not even talked about. This is not even discussed. Raven Johnson be a red shirt junior going into this season. Red shirt junior. Raven could go to the W because she'll be four years removed from high school. She got hurt that first year, red shirt. She could go to the W. Lord, I hope she don't. But she could. There's a scenario that we'll be replacing Raven, Powell, um, Bree, and Fagan. Year after next. But no worry, Gamecocks. No worries. Because in the the in the batter's box, in the in the waiting room, in the dugout, you have uh uh Maddie and Joyce, and, 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 and you're going to have a situation where you're going to be starting my, Malaysia and, and Tessa and so many different great players to go along with some, some really good players that's going to be coming up in the 2025 season. 25, 2025 uh, recruits a player that I, I really like. Um, Deanna Dana, she won't be here. She's gone. She won't be here. You know, she, she already decided her... Uh, Final three, you know, she's a really good player. And her final three is Ohio State, Illinois, and Cincinnati. But I really like her, but she won't be a game cop. But there's going to be a whole ton of them. There's going to be a whole lot of uh, the, the, the writing is on the wall. If you want to become a champion, you got to come to South Carolina. I'm just saying, that's, that, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Um, Robert, she was the best player on the floor, period. Plays both sides of the floor. How special is that? And then and they always, you know, these commentators, I, I, I and it just irritates the crap out of me when I keep hearing about, Oh, um, this player is a great two-way player. Ladies and gentlemen, the game is basketball. The you you are it, it shouldn't be an asterisk to a person's name when when they are when, when uh, they got to highlight that a player is a great two-way player, meaning the player plays offense and the player plays defense. That is basketball. Okay, they made it a few times. Like Kennedy Smith is the best, the best uh, two-way player in 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 high school basketball. Like what? Like we got it. We got to I like that. But you got so many players who don't play defense nowadays. Then you got to put an asterisk with that. Well, Joyce Edwards is not an offensive player. She's not a defensive player. She is a basketball player. She plays. She plays. Uh, uh, really good defense, and she plays really good offense. She averaged 30 plus points, about 14 rebounds, what five assists, five steals, like four block shots during a high school uh senior year. I mean, come on, she's special, but stop with this two way player mess because for that matter, everybody on South Carolina team are great two way players because everybody played defense. Like, what? it's so it's so silly to me. This two way player crap. Mm-mm. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, Christopher Jones, lots of talent on both teams. Next season should be even better. It really, really angers me that this was just the second year of the ladies, Team USA, playing against the world. The second year, all oh, the great high school basketball girls that has been going through the pipeline to college basketball. And this is the second one. The boys at what, 25, 26 uh, 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 year of, of having this thing. That showcase, if you have not watched it, make sure you watch it. Make sure you watch it because you are literally watching uh, players who will be drafted into the W on both sides. You got a lot of players in the world who actually going to be playing, you know, who's, who's already playing, you know, for, um, High schools in the United States are just from other countries. Got it. Okay. But these players you will see at multiple, multiple high level Division I basketball pre- programs from Stanford and from Washington and, and uh, Duke and Southern Cal and uh, Notre Dame and Ohio State and, 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 and Michigan, so many different places. It's just, it's great watching a, a, a wonderful basketball players. On both sides, playing really good basketball. It was so great to see. So great to see. JB, no research was done. They were fed everything to say. 
JB, you're so, so right. And it irritates the crap out of me. It just, it just irritates me. You got somebody in your ear telling you what to say. You got somebody in your ear. Uh, um, we got we to hit those high points. We got to say this right here versus saying like, yo, let me take a day. This is just a day. Let me take a day and learn a little bit about every single player on this basketball team. Let's earn, learn their story. Because everybody on this basketball team, Team USA and the world are special. These are, are the most elite basketball te- players. You know, team, oh, the world, you're talking about 19 and under. They had a girl who's 15 years old, like six foot four. What? I mean, this, this the, the, the growth of a women's basketball, or, or, or I say to the, to the non-women's basketball fans has been unbelievable. But these girls has always been here. This ain't just started now. This ain't just started. Just went on TV. You couldn't see it. So I, I was irritated by that. Irritated by that. Mick Joyce is the real deal. For sure. Big Man Sports Don said is not an X and O coach. She needs all the talent she can get. Big Man Sports, uh, apparently, Big Man Sports, you must have been hanging out with Don Staley. You must be on the bench. You must be going to the practices. You must be in the locker room. You got some access that even Captain Will don't have to come out and say that she's not an X and O coach. You're talking about Don Staley. You're talking about a uh, player of the year in, 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 in college basketball. You're talking about multiple time Olympic champion playing and coaching. You're talking about our three time, three time, three time national champion, big man sports. I'm just confused. I'm just confused. Don Staley has forgot more in X's and O's than most coaches will ever know. Hear me now, hear me clear. Don't come for this queen. Don't say no mess like that. She needs all the talent she can have. What? What the hell? Don't do that, bro. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I, I, I mean, maybe you do go to practice. Maybe you do. Maybe you're out there watching her scheme, uh, uh, um, offenses and defenses. Maybe that's what you do. I'm not. I'm, I'm a little confused. Maybe because maybe you got some insight I don't know about. Maybe you got some insight. Last time I checked, she three times coach of the year, multiple times coach of the year. She got like thirty thousand, you know, uh, coach of the year trophies sitting in her her uh, her trophy cabinet. Not sure, not sure. That I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that means. It means she's pretty good to me. X's and O's. <laughs> you funny. You funny. Thank you for watching, though. Appreciate the love. Thank you for watching. But you're wrong. Tyra Johnson. She bought out yesterday. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. She's Bree Wayne. Joyce can slash with a big stature, and she got a good mid-range, very bouncy too, complete athlete. Yes, yes, and yes. And, and it looks to me she got uh, stronger. From the last time I saw her when it was um, when Grace Christian played Camden High School, she looked like she got a little stronger. Could be, uh, I ain't going to say could be, look like she uh, hitting that weight room, getting swole. That's what it looks like to me, getting ready. To to uh, go to USC and do work. That's what it like to me. She never takes time off. She played volleyball, basketball. Now in soccer, the girl is elite. You know. So I mean, come on. Robert Don Saley got three championships over six years. You wins. Is you crazy? Exit over that. You're right. I don't, I don't know what the brothers talk about. I have no idea. I have no idea what he's talking about. It's just, it's just <laughs> that's funny. X's and O's. <laughs> Don Staley. <laughs> that's funny. That's hilarious. It's cute. Ty Gwen, how tall is that? Was um Joyce is 6'3. Joyce is 6'3. And I say that because I stood beside her multiple times. The last time I stood beside her, like, yeah, you grown some girl. Took a picture with her, of course. And um, I mean, she she's she's six three. She's legit six three. So the no ESPN showing she's six foot two. She ain't no six foot two. She ain't no six foot two. Her mom, I made a tweet. I can't remember what I said. Oh, I know what I did. I posted. I think I posted a picture with uh, Joyce, myself, and then my wife. I believe that's what I did. And I said, uh, she ain't, I mean, oh, how can I say? Because I'm six foot, five, 11 and three quarters. I'm, that's what I am. And I'm looking up to her. And I, and I think I said something about, oh, she ain't no six foot two. Uh-uh, I got to cancel that. Her mama came out and said it. Mama came in and said, no, she been, she's been six foot three for a while. She don't want to say she's six foot three. She's six foot three. If her mama says she's six foot three, she's six foot three. Beautiful family. Joyce, that was a beautiful family. 
I mean, oh my gosh. Mama, daddy, uncle, like everybody, everybody associated with Joyce L was just amazing. Shout out to her uncle. Really cool. I mean, we chopped it up. Get good bit. Really cool. Um, she is rain. Colorado's big in the portal, cap. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. There's so many people, thousands in the portal. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mick, little man sports is a hater. Yep. Rob B. Joyce Edwards. Joyce Edwards was Jordan and Kennedy Smith was Pippen in the in the Nike Summit. Oh, that's a great analogy. Because the they were playing so good together. So, so good. Your turn, my turn. And both of them are quick, both of them are defensive minded. It, that's a good, that's a good scenario. Uh Samaritan. That is good. That is good. It's 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 so um it's so wonderful seeing quality basketball. And you got the WNBA draft tonight. Then you're gonna have the uh it's really they gonna start their, their their training camp and then you know the first the first um I should say preseason game is May 3rd. May 3rd, I believe it's Indiana versus Dallas. Now if you're not if you don't have the WNBA league pass, you might want to get it. It's only $14.99 for the whole season. Might want to get that so you can see everything and continue to support our Gamecocks. Preseason starting in a couple weeks. Regular season start, I want to say May 14th. We're going to talk about our Gamecocks all WNBA NBA season long because we, so, we have so many Gamecocks in the WNBA. Camilla gonna be drafted soon, but we're gonna also be talking about some other young ladies who we, we who who we followed in in in, in college. And we're gonna talk about some Angel and some Caitlin. With so many different players, we're gonna be talking about to keep the 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 juices flowing until our season begins again. But make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. Joyce Edwards is going to be one of the best players in the garden in black uniform when it's all said and done when she graduates and go to the w y'all are going to be talking about joyce edwards for a long time and i definitely going to be talking about joyce for some time in the future it is so amazing so uh amazing she is rewriting joyce has everything you need in the ford needs to work on a shot a lot though she'll need it She'll work on a shot. She'll work on a shot. But what she's good at, she's great at. Offensive rebounding. Defensive rebounding. Uh, uh, slashing. Handling the ball. Intensity. Defense. She That's so much growth. She is, I mean, it's kind of like this right here. She's further along than Ashton Watkins was in, in, in high school. She's further along than Chloe. She's further along than uh, Sanaya was in high school. You know, she, she, I mean, she's further along than Camilla was in high school. Let's be real. If you go back and watch Camilla Cardoza, and the, that was that 2020, you know, COVID year, she didn't have an opportunity to play in the McDonald's All American loan, our own Tina Pow Pow. But Joyce Edwards is further along than our bigs were at this stage of their career. You know, potential elite. Elite. Basketball talent, elite. William W. Ellis. William W. Ellis. Um, hoop, mid-range, three-point scoring, rebounding, offensive rebounding, defensive rebounding, very quick, uh, great, very quick foot speed, good handles, good defense. Come on. Say less, bro. Say less. Robert, she has 18, 8 to 10 footer. She'll expand it. Cardoza will be missed, though. She will be missed. Cardoza will be missed. But I'm not going to um, sit here. I'm not going to have a um, – I love me some Camila Cardoza. I, I'm not going to front about that. But Camila Cardoza blossomed this season. She blossomed this season. This is the first year that Camila Cardoza started for the South Carolina Gamecocks. She started her first year over in Syracuse. But that as a Gamecock – person she grew as the years progressed the, the 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 um the template isn't different 
with any basketball player who arrives at the University of South Carolina. It ain't different. It ain't different. You work your way up, minutes increase, you get better, you get better, and you better. You look at Sanaya Fagan. You look at Bree Hall. You look at Raven Johnson. You know, you look at Chloe. You know, you don't, I mean, Ashton Watkins took a huge jump. So Camila Cardoso got incrementally better the longer she was a game cop. She will be missed for sure because you, you don't replace six foot seven with that skill set. You don't. But she will be missed, but we got some talented, talented players on this basketball team. James Fadden, appreciate you, brother. Cap now with Joyce Don has all the infinity stones. So the rest of the women basketball better be prepared for the snap. Thank you. Thank you for the Marvel reference. You are now that you're talking about Marvel, you're like one of my most fam- favorite people in the world. And, and I know some people are not going to get the the, uh, the analogy of the Infinity Stones. and But trust me when I say this, you are absolutely right. Yeah, Don Staley is Thanos. And you know who don't know who Thanos is, go Google him. She's, she's Thanos, and she got all the Infinity Stones. It's locked up. It's locked up. Uh, here you go. Game Cop 420. Hell yeah, Cap. You got that one. TNO 1906. Um, oh, six. Uh, Cardoza provided reliable score and other players aren't as consistent. If somebody steps up, they'll be better next year. They still went on occasional scoring droughts. Cardoza provided lo- reliable score. Okay. Let's, let's break this down. Let's break this down. Cardoza had a great year this year. Okay. But for the totality, because we got to go 38 games, totality, because there was a lot of conversation about Camila Cardoza early in the season. And I know it's a lot of fans who just jumping on the bandwagon right now, just started watching Camila Cardoza. You know, Cardoza has been um, by Gamecock fans, and sometimes unjustly, it was conversations talking about she's not an aggressive enough. She's not doing this enough. She's not gonna, and I and it was multiple times during the season on my show. I was like, Y'all gotta leave Camila Cardoza alone. The girl six foot seven, she does what she does well, she does what she does great, and sometimes she just don't do it. That's just the way Camila Cardoza was. Okay, and we've seen her get incrementally better over the last three years as a South Carolina Gamecock. And, and when she now she is a reliable score and she it took time, though, it took time to get to where she is right now. Now, the basketball team that was surrounding Camila Cardoza this season was a under. Uh, what's not underplayed? Yeah, I guess that's probably not the right word, but underplayed uh, unit. Bree Hall didn't get a lot of minutes before, even though she was in her junior year. Sonia Fagan didn't get a, a lot of minutes before, even though her junior year. Ashley Watkins didn't even play much her freshman year, and then she got a lot of burn. Chloe barely played her freshman year, and then got a lot of burn. Raven was coming off an of injury last year, and, and then got this burn. Tina Popeye was new, okay? Full Wiley, a f- true freshman. Tessa Johnson, a true freshman. You feel where I'm coming from? This is what I'm talking about. This team, like I said last year, last year is a rebuilding team that won the chip. There were some scoring drops, but there's nobody scoring drops because it was a baby team. This was a rebuilding team. This is a rebuilding team, TNO 1906. This Carolina team will be so much better so much better than this team right here. And I say this right here. This is the reason I say it. People are talking about, can't wait, what are you talking about? Cardoso gone. Cardoso is gone. She is gone. Top four pick in the WNBA draft. But there were times, and I said it for about a half a season, that Cardoza was not our best player on this basketball team. I said that a lot, a lot this season. She ended up being the best player on this basketball team by season end. But go back and look. Go back and look. The first half of the season, she was not best basketball player. No. She wasn't. But who cares? Because this team ain't developed by one player. 
that's the uh, national media and that's the, 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 what the world or, or how uh, other teams are assembled. This team ain't assembled like that. This is like my man. This is how my uh, Don Stanley got the Infinity Stones. We, yes, he got the Infinity Stones because one player leaving the Gamecocks doesn't mean that things going to change. It doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Like things are going to change for South Carolina. We lost a lead Boston, Bree Bill, Leticia, and me here. Zaya Cook off this squad from last season and went undefeated this season. What? No. It doesn't matter who's gone because when you recruit well, when you recruit the best and fill needs from the transfer portal accordingly, it don't matter who leaves. It's just the next person up. It's just a new opportunity for you to be that person, for you to be her. So Camila's gone. Camila didn't play 40 minutes a game. She didn't play 30 minutes a game. Camila Cardoza played 26 minutes per game, roughly about 25.7 minutes per game over the course of the season. Know what I mean? That means we had a lot of players getting burned. That's how Carolina works. Raven going to be better. Full body. Pow. So many players going to be better than they were this past season. And adding Adele at six foot five, adding Joyce Edwards at six foot three, adding Maddie McDaniel, five foot six. Love it. Oh, I love it. Hmm. This country time lemonade is so good. Mm. Reggie, Joyce reminds me of Rakia Jackson. That's a great analogy. That's a great analogy. Rakia Jackson was not the shooter that she ended up being at Tennessee. First of all, Rakia Jackson played in her fifth year this year. Rakia Jackson was a WNBA player still playing college. That's what she was. And offensively, her game is tight. And she's going to be a top three, top four pick tonight. And that's a good analogy, Rakia Jackson. Mm. Nice. Um, James McFadden, what talent did Dan have when she was at the temple? Uh, what talent? What talent did Don have when she was at Temple? In the first couple of years, she was here before she we had um all the so count called talent. What talent did Don have when she was at Temple? Well. Temple is, you know, Temple had a similar tra uh, trajectory that South Carolina had. Um, Temple was a dormant program when she arrived. And he turned that program around and they had multiple NCAA tournament um, appearances. At Temple, she never got the top level recruits. Um to come to Temple. And those are just the facts. She didn't have no uh, number one ranked recruits and things of that nature, but she brought them to multiple NCAA appearances. If she would have stayed at Temple, I believe it would be the same situation that um, she's working, what's going on, what's going down in South Carolina. I think she would have assembled an amazing coaching staff. I think her recruiting, her, her, her being her, which she would do the same thing at Temple. If you remember back, because Don been here for 16 years, you remember back when she first arrived at University of South Carolina, nobody was talking about South Carolina women's basketball. Nobody. They wasn't no, they were damn near giving away tickets so people can go see that game, the uh, Carolina games. And then over the course of time, Don Staley being who she is, apparently not a good X's and O's, O's uh, X's and O's coach, according to some folks, you know, did what she did, did. Recruits started coming. The talent increased at USC, and the talent ain't going nowhere. Ain't going nowhere. The talent level of USC is the highest it's ever been. But it just didn't happen overnight. It took years upon years of 
growing or fertilizing, you know, young girls to, to, to be great. It, it took years upon years. Y'all, and you saw that thing on Twitter or, or social media is an old picture of, of Don Staley, you know, taking a picture with Chloe Kiss. And she had to be, I don't know, seven, eight, whatever it was, tiny. And then a future pic of Don Staley and Chloe Huggins. Those are the relationships are built at a young age. So you, you, you planting those seeds early, early, early. And then hopefully that seed grows into something special and they are a game cop. Joyce Edwards was a ball girl at USC. Yeah. Crazy, right? Things come full circle. Come full circle. But Billy Bob Cooter, appreciate you, bro. Who would Joyce most likely come off the bench behind? Mm. I would say, because I'm, I'm talking about the starting lineup being Fagan, Watkins, um, Bree, Powell, and, and Raven, right? So I see a scenario where in terms of post players, and we'll talk more about this in the future, but in terms of post players, you have uh, Fagan come out, Ashton slide over to the center, Chloe comes in. I think it's going to be that rotation. Chloe, Watkins, Fagan, and, and, and Joyce kind of working together intricately and then working, you know, they'll tack off the injury up some too. Uh, that's, that is scenario. I see that, the, that uh, Camila Cardoza, 26 minutes a game will be distributed amongst Joyce, and um, I think Watkins will get a little bit more uh, minutes. I mean, this season she averaged 21 minutes. I think Chip, right, that'll probably go up to about 23, 24 minutes. Um, uh, I saw Chloe, Chloe got about 19, 18 minutes a game. I see that going up to about 21, 22. Not, not a whole bunch of minutes because Carolina don't play a lot of minutes anyway. But those her minutes will go up a little bit. Fagan played roughly about 15 and a half minutes per game. You know, I see those going up to maybe about 20, 21. You know, though it's going to be a, a, a joint effort for uh, South Carolina replacing uh, Camila Cardoza's minutes. A few ticks here, a few ticks there. You know, it's not rocket science, but it's going to be great. And I think a lot of it, I think a lot of it will, um, will, will, will uh, do with, um, you know, the health of Adele Tack. If Adele Tack is ready and ready to go, I think that she's going to get, depending on the summer, because I don't, I, I'm not sure if she will be ready to go early in the summer when preseason camp starts and things. If she's ready to go and the, 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 the uh, likelihood of and a healthy Adele Tack at six foot five coming off the bench. For 10, 12 minutes a game, 13, you know what I'm saying? Just just incrementally getting ready. It's, it's, it's so much, it's not any pressure on a Delta. It's not. It is not any pressure on Delta. And, and, and I say that because you it, these are the reasons why you you, you drag you uh recruit Fagan. Fagan's a senior. Fagan six foot three, and we saw the the the, the growth that Sanaya Fagan had during the season. I, I think that's going to um, give me get it even better during the summer. And Ashton, why? Because she grew so much from freshman to sophomore year. It's, 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 I mean, come on, we can have a celebration on that one alone. And I think being more comfortable, being comfortable offensively, because defensively she is her. But that little uh. Jump hook she has, her ability to, to, to drive to the basket and to jump over anybody. I mean, that's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. And you know, is is this basketball team is now. Now, we can speak on this basketball team in the same vein that UConn had over their dynasty. It's not as long, obviously, but you got to start somewhere. 
and four straight Final Fours, two out of three of the last championships, Carolina's won. And the 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 realm of possibility that Carolina over the next four years will be in multiple, multiple championships is 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 that's not hard to fathom. We'll be the overwhelming favorite this season. Overwhelming. And there better be a whole lot of All-American, preseason All-Americans, preseason All-SEC, blah, 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 blah. All those different things. It probably won't because, you know, you know how they feel about South Carolina. But it is what it is. Reggie, Joyce will be a monster at three. She definitely will be a monster at three. But I think that um, the way that we play, the bulk of the minutes at three, because we basically play three guards. We, Our team is three guards and in, 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 in a center and a forward. That's, that's pretty much our team. You know, so I don't see us deviating from that because um, I think that uh, Tessa will be getting a lot more time this off uh, upcoming season. She's proven that she is a baller, so she'll be getting the bulk of the minutes at after Bree comes off the bench. Uh, after Bree goes to the bench, um, so she'll be getting the bulk of those minutes too, and. But they, I could see a scenario where Tessa is, is at the two and, and Joyce is at the three and Full Wally's at the one. I could see something like that. And I wouldn't be upset whatsoever. Not at all. You know, because Tessa, and I say Full Wally at the one, Tessa handled the ball herself. There's a lot of different um, scenarios or, or instances where, where Tessa was handling the ball and Full Wally was playing two guard. You know? It, that that scenario with those two players, and I'm talking about Full Wally. And hell, I'm gonna say all those three players with Full Wally, um, Tessa, and Joyce. I think you see a lot of that this season. I do. The future is now, and the future is forever. You know, we 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 have so many great players, but the way the minutes are are are, are massaged. We will see all the great players play, all of them, and that is the that's real talk. That's the Achilles heel for the other other basketball teams. Because what scenario other teams gonna have when you have Full Wally five star recruit, Tessa five star recruit, Joyce five star recruit, Adele five uh, five star recruit, um, Manny five star recruit. And Chloe, I don't know if Chloe gonna be starting or whatever scenario. Chloe or Watkins, they because they're gonna be going back and forth, you know, throughout the season, you know. But you have so many five star recruits that be coming off the bench. Good luck, opposing teams. Just good luck. That's all I gotta say. Good luck with that one, Robert. I think Joyce and Chloe play a lot. They will clean up the boards. I think, and those are you know those are besties too. You know? Those are Joyce and Chloe are best besties. They played together, Team USA. Chloe was there when she committed, went to Camden, and, and when she was there, um, the game, you know, Grace Christian against Camden, you know, Chloe was there along with Don and the coaching staff and multiple other players. But, yeah, Chloe is a girl, so I would love to see that. I want to see the growth. I want to see Chloe put on about another 10, 10, 12 pounds and improve on the growth that she had. You know, you're talking about she had 9.6 rebounds off, off, what, 18 minutes a game? Shot 55% from the field. Come on. 67% from free throw line. Very solid defensive rating. <laughs> Can't wait. Karen Richardson. Hey, fam. My daughter is working the WNBA draft tonight. Karen Richardson, that is straight up amazing. First off, that's awesome. Correct. Congrats to your daughter. That is awesome. Yo, um, you know, I think, you know what, Karen, um, DM me, DM me. Maybe we can get your daughter on the on the show. Talk about this stuff. Maybe maybe sometime this week. You know her experience. That'd be awesome. Because you know we we all want to know the inside scoop of what's going on. You know that'd be awesome. Can can uh, DM me on my Twitter account or email me at Caps Corner at Yahoo.com. That'd be that'd be amazing. If that can happen. Pauline Thomas Griffin, what's up, girl? Um, remember Cardoza missed four games and we were still good. We can handle it. Plus with our recruit. Yeah, I think that's, and you bring up a great, great point, Pauline. It is, we did, she did miss four games. She did miss multiple games playing for, um, team Brazil, you know, trying to make the Olympics and we didn't skip a beat. No, 
because when you have a team of stars, it doesn't matter if a star is gone. That's what I'm trying to relay. And Pauline, you, you said that best. We said that best. At FM, the threes open the lane for Cardoza would have opened for Boston last year. I mean, the threes had changed the dynamic of uh, this basketball team. It really did. It it changed. It changed so much. But the threes would open. You know, this goes all the way back. If we had the three point shooting that we had last season, it would make. Imagine Agent Wilson with open uh, open lane. You know, because in, in in this is the thing, right? In women's basketball, women's college basketball, there's no such thing as a defensive three seconds. So you can guard Aaliyah Boston the way they did guard her for her a good por portion of her junior and senior year. You can do that. You 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 could collapse, and we didn't have the the shooters to make teams pay for it. Well, that's over. That is over. That for the foreseeable future, that is over. Powell got another year. Tessa got three more years. Full Wally got three more years. You know, though, I mean, I think when it's all said and done, Tessa Johnson going to, you know, full, uh, no, Powell has the best shot. Powell has the, is the best shooter in the country. Not by volume, but best shooter in the country. That's Tahina Powell Powell. Tessa Johnson, over four years, I don't know what a three point record is for South Carolina, but that those whatever record is is going to be obliterated, obliterated by Tessa Johnson. Gone. Her shot is so just sick. She has a sick shot, y'all. And you know the South Carolina going to get another shooter. It's going to be another designated shooter at the three point line once Tahina Power Power goes uh, goes you know on to the W next season. But then you you have a situation with Tessa's a junior, much like we have right now. So you have you have Tessa a junior, and you have some uh, sh uh amazing shooting guard, shooting small forward, whatever case you want to be, who be that freshman, who come off the bench and light it up. This is just so amazing, just so amazing for the South Carolina game, guys. We got something going on, and it ain't gonna stop. It ain't gonna stop. It's just awesome. This concludes another episode of Game Gods Talk with Captain Will. I'm your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe to Game Cox Talk with Captain Will so I can continue to bring you that gospel of Game Cox every single day. Follow me on Twitter at Game Cox Talk. Follow me on Instagram, Game Cox Talk with Captain Will. If you want to be a member, we are we we are be, we are going to be doing a members only, you know, podcast. Uh, in the near future, sometime this week, chop it up. And if you are a gold member, if you're a gold member and I have not sent you a T-shirt, email me at capscorner at yahoo.com so I can get that thing out to you. You are now rocking with the best. And since you're rocking with the best, come rock with your man.